Hi, my name is Darren Johnston. I'm a Bay Area based trumpet player, composer, songwriter, and band leader. Yvonne is a good friend of mine who was actually staying with me at the time I started working on Songs of Seven Miles. So he was my very first interview. And he's from Bulgaria. He's the life of every party and uh, loves to sing and dance and play music. Songs of Seven Miles just had its premiere across the street at the Yerba Buena Garden Festival. It featured my quintet plus three vocalists, and it was a song cycle based on a series of interviews that I uh, conducted with various immigrants living in San Francisco. I transcribed and chopped up the interviews, and uh, using repetition and rearranging, I was able to create songs out of their own words uh, for them. Leto is a friend of mine. He's a He's actually a Bhutto dancer and performance artist. He's an incredible artist. Uh, he's from Burma originally. Um, he's part of a minority called the Karen people. And his family had to flee Burma when he was about six. You take an interest in your own moments, in your own body, in your own moments, in your own Luis is a day laborer from Mexico City. He crossed the desert over the course of four days on foot, swam across the river and ended up in Texas, uh, went into the back of a van and was driven from here to there, crossed many state lines over the course of 14 days. Uh, now he's been in San Francisco for three and a half years and sends money back to his family who he hasn't seen in that amount of time. And he spoke with much gratitude uh, when he spoke of San Francisco and the opportunity it's given him to make money and feed his family. But he hopes to go home to them someday. Suk is from Seoul, Korea, and she was telling me how in the 50s and the 60s when she was growing up in Korea, it was very strict. There were certain things that girls do and do not. And she ended up falling in love with an American man, which is a huge scandal. Came out here to study uh, at Stanford and arrived in the Bay Area in 1969, where it was a much freer take on life. And uh, she speaks very well, very highly of those times. She told me that she was kind of a rebel side. I guess, 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 I
Sergey and Irina are pillars of community in the Mission District. Uh, they're from Russia. Uh, they, their family uh, and their son, Peter Varshavsky, founded Porto Franco Records. And they're constantly bringing different cultures and different communities within San Francisco together at the Porto Franco Art Parlor, be it the Klezmer Brunch, uh, readings, concerts, art openings, or just parties, the occasional fantastic party. Mina is from Egypt, and for his interview, he told me of his uh, trips back to uh, Tahir Square in Egypt to take part in the uh, pro-democracy uh, protests. Um, he said something to me that, that struck me. He said, uh, Egyptians don't merely tolerate, they actually have an appreciation for cacophony. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and, uh, and then he went on to describe what Zambaleta means, which yeah. is a little bit of that. It's about a sort of positive, chaotic state. So uh, this song is from Mina. It's called Zambaleta. This world. Zambaleta. This world. Zambaleta. This Egyptian word. The experience of Zambaleta. Is some different movement. And you don't know which is which. And they're all sitting together. more for you here. Uh, this is for my friend Carlos. He's a dancer. He's uh, originally from Peru. and he, he first got here on an artist visa and then uh, he was able to uh, get refugee status for his sexuality to move here. And I didn't know that was an option in this country. And I was really kind of proud to learn that. I'm kind of happy to learn that. Um, I've since heard other stories of, of people being able to um, immigrate to this country on that grounds too people whose lives are in danger back in their home country for that. You know. I had a whole interview transcribed from him, verses, choruses, whole sections. Eventually, I willed his song just down to one line uh, that he had said while quoting his immigration lawyer. She said, you have to get something personal out of this to make it real. And that line kept coming back to me while I was working on Songs of Seven Miles. You have to get something personal out of this to make it real.
have to get something personal out of this. Thank you very much. I was kind of a rebel side. I didn't like all the traditional ways. I was kind of a rebel side. Now, but in those days. My next project is going to be Letters to Home, which is going to be, well, it's going to use a similar technique uh, of rearranging words to create text, only this time it'll be uh, 10 commissioned letters uh, of immigrant writers uh, describing a little bit of their backstory and what brought them here, uh, but also uh, giving themselves advice if they could go back in time and give themselves advice. I'll rearrange those, write the new song cycle, Letters to Home, and pull together the Transglobal People's Chorus, which will be uh, a 16-person choir using singing and stomping and clapping and a lot of repetition so that it can even expand and be grabbed onto by everybody else. I'm now a U.S. citizen. Uh, I considered writing a letter to myself. Uh, I'm not sure I'm up for it. It remains to be seen. <laughs> Well, one thing that made that was great about this project, Songs of Seven Miles, was that songwriting tends to be very personal. But this was not about me. These songs are about Yvonne, Sergey, and Irina. They're about Ledo, and that I was able because of that I was able to tap into something I think that was a little more pure. There's something that was, it was very emotional for me to write these songs as gifts and not make it about me, you know? So, it would be hard to have that level of detachment. <laughs> Although, I have some pretty good stories about coming here, so maybe I will do it. <laughs>